U.S. President Joe Biden has called Russian leader Vladimir Putin a butcher and explained how the U.S. could help protect Ukraine from him. He said this at a pre-election event in North Carolina. Biden spoke about the possibility of raising additional funds by increasing taxes for billionaires in the United States. He noted that if billionaires paid a 25% federal tax rate, it could generate 400 billion US dollar over the next 10 years. Imagine what we could do with that. We could do so many things, consequential, including finally making sure that we take care of Ukraine from that butcher Putin, Biden said. In February, Biden called Vladimir Putin a crazy son of a bitch during a fundraising event in San Francisco. The Kremlin called these words shameful. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov suggested that Americans should be ashamed of a leader who indulged in such comments. If the president of that nation uses that kind of language, that is shameful, he said, adding that Biden may have been trying to emulate a Hollywood cowboy to appeal to domestic audiences. Additionally, Biden recently referred to Putin as a thug making sure that we take care of Ukraine from that butcher Putin. Look, I see a future where we save the planet from the climate crisis and our country from gun violence. Above all, a future for all Americans, for a country for all Americans. And I'll always be president for all Putin's awkward act showed his weakness. The Economist. After the ISIS terrorist attack in Moscow, which became a colossal failure of the Russian intelligence services and a slap in the face to Putin, the head of the Kremlin cowardly disappeared and reappeared almost a day later with a false statement in which he tried to ridiculously concoct blame for Ukraine. However, such behavior is traditional for the Russian president, writes the British magazine The Economist. Putin is a man who likes victories, preferably staged managed ones. It is noted that last year, when Yevgeny Prigozhin and his band of mercenaries made their way to Moscow, Putin was initially nowhere to be seen, the magazine writes. So if he took a full 19 hours to conjure up a short TV performance to speak about the massive intelligence failure at Crocus City Hall in Moscow, he was falling into a familiar pattern. The address itself gave little away and appeared to serve as a hedge. Putin claimed, ludicrously, that Ukraine had opened a border window to the terrorists as they tried to escape Russia in their white Renault symbol. But the Russian president stopped short of directly attributing responsibility to Ukraine for the attack and said nothing about the Islamic State group that said it had carried it out. Part of Putin's reluctance to go all in on blaming Ukraine might reflect a worry that the American government is sitting on intelligence that could undermine such a claim. Part might be embarrassment at his security agency's failure to act on American warnings on March the 7th of an imminent attack. Indeed, just three days before the assault, Putin had brushed off that intelligence as blackmail. Such a hubristic blunder would have consequences in a country where power can be held to account. Russia is not such a country. The attack nevertheless represents a blow to the reputation of Putin and the security services on which he depends. The manner of the assault, in which at least 137 people lost their lives, will not soon be forgotten. There are many questions over the inept security at the glitzy venue, which is in an entertainment park in Moscow's northwest suburbs. It is unclear why local police failed to respond quickly. A producer of a show held at Crocus City Hall 10 days before the attack noted that 200 security guards were present that night. British Defence Minister ridicules Russia. It hides ships in ports but they sink even there. Russia continues its large-scale military aggression against Ukraine and suffers significant losses. In particular, the Black Sea Fleet has lost its functional activity, states UK Defence Secretary Grant Shapps. This is how the British official reacted to defeat of two Russian large landing ships, Yamal and Ozov, by the Ukrainian Defence Forces in occupied Crimea. Putin's continued illegal occupation of Ukraine is exacting a massive cost on Russia's Black Sea Fleet, which is now functionally inactive. The British Defence Secretary said in a statement. He noted that the Russian fleet has been sailing the Black Sea since 1783, but now it is forced to constrain its fleet to a port. And even there, Putin's ships are sinking, Shaps concluded. On March the 24th, the Strategic Communications Directorate of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that the Defence Forces had struck at Russian occupiers' facilities in Sevastopol. Two Russian landing ships and the communications centre were destroyed. Thus, the Ukrainian military attacked the large landing ships Yamal and Azov. 
They also hit the communication center of the Russian occupation forces and several infrastructure facilities of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in the temporarily occupied Sevastopol. There were explosions in the occupied Crimea, particularly in Sevastopol. The network wrote about the alleged work of air defense and the occupiers blocked the Crimean bridge. According to residents, a fire broke out in the Kozacha Bay in Sevastopol. OSINT analysts also noted that a large communication hub of the Russian Black Sea Fleet could have been hit in Sevastopol. On the night of March the 5th, a special unit of the Defense Intelligence Group 13 near the Kirsch Strait attacked the Black Sea Fleet patrol ship Sergei Kotov. As a result of the attack by Magura V-5 maritime drones, the ship was eliminated. This is the third Russian Black Sea Fleet vessel to sink in the last five weeks. Following a series of significant losses of Russian ships in the Black Sea, on March the 10th, Russian Navy Chief Admiral Nikolai Evmenov was dismissed and replaced by Northern Fleet Commander Admiral Alexander Moiseev. In February, Admiral Viktor Sokolov, the commander of the Black Sea Fleet, was dismissed due to losses.